Well, it was about 2,000 years ago that Yeshua stood before a pretty much pagan leader, pilot, and was asked a question, what is truth? I, Mary, as I just read this uh, again just a few minutes ago, just to make sure that nothing had been inserted here, I do not find that Yeshua said, Google it. <laughs> uh, he did not say, check, duck, duck, go. Uh-huh. Uh, he did not say, search that on YouTube. It seems that in a place at a time of revelation, a time of information, that truth would be easier to find today than it was 2,000 years ago, but I dare say it is much more difficult to find truth. What say you? If truth is truth and nothing but the truth, there are those things that have truth as an ingredient, but they add the other ingredients. Does truth then still remain? Uh, it's kind of like an egg is an egg, but when you put it in with oil and other ingredients, you might end up with mayonnaise. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of variety of truth. So the the joke is, well, it's got to be true. I saw it on the internet. Uh, it's uh, it's a very sad joke. Yeah, or, we chuckle, uh, but it's a very sad, sad joke because there's a lot of uh, internet theology out there. Yeah, yeah. Or the uh, I, I saw it on a commercial. <laughs> I mean, th this this commercial told me that if I will just put this tape, uh, you know, one strip of this tape on the the side of an aquarium, that uh, <laughs> you know, it'll hold forever. It's <laughs> You know, and, and as much as people say, I don't believe those things. I, I mean, you, you talk to the average person today regarding the news, the news cycle. I don't believe what they're saying. Barry, if you continue the conversation with you with them, they believe what they're saying. Because I saw it. I saw it with my own two eyes. Well, is that true? You you saw it with your own two eyes, but you didn't see what was around it that was the context of the it. There are those that have said in an audience and said, I saw that man put that woman in a box and saw her in half and then put her back together. I saw it with my own eyes. I saw him, I saw him pull a rabbit out of his hat. I saw that with my own eyes. The, uh, the word of wisdom I heard as a kid was, believe only about half of what you see and less of what you hear. Uh, that's, that's, that's pretty good counsel, especially in our day. So, Barry, this came about by a, uh, a, a video or a, an article that you sent me, which was regarding a ministry that um, has been attacked by various people regarding some uh, some issues, and and I'm not. I, this is not the first thing, the first time I've ever heard this, uh, or something derogatory regarding this ministry, but. With that being said, you did some further research, and the people that are uh, that are in charge of this ministry said, "No, that's not what we believe." And then they explained some things. And uh, though there's maybe some uh, some questions that would still go unanswered, I'd like to have a little bit more defined answer to this. Um, it, it appears that once again the attack dogs. Are, are out. I remember as an early uh, follower of, of Messiah, uh, I listened to a, a lot of Christian radio. I mean, I had a I had a business, and I could spend literally like eight hours with a, with a headphone and a Sony Walkman of all things. Ooh, um, yeah, that was that was the big day, and <laughs> um, 
I, I remember once in a while I would tune in to Hank Hanegraaff. Now, I don't know if Hank Hanegraaff is around anymore, but uh, he was the Bible answer man. Uh-huh. And you could call in and you could ask him any question uh, that you wanted to about anything and any ministry and any person. And uh, he was going to give you the answer. And what I found is that if you ask him about a doctrine, uh, he would never really describe what you're calling about, but would say why he's right about what he believes. And if it was about another ministry, he would he would just describe why they're wrong and he's right. And by the way, send your tithes and offerings to BR five four one. You know, is it, it, is is YouTube um, and and a number of other social media and things? Has it come down to just trying to prove what you think is true? I think you know you uh, you hit on this uh, in another video. Uh, I forget who you said you were talking to. It's not so much that we're looking for truth; we're looking for validation. I think it was something you and Hanok talked talk yeah, about. Yeah, we, me and Hanok talked about that on our uh, Israel update last week. So you're looking for validation of what you already think is true. And you'll only ask those who you believe will agree with you. Yeah. So the the old trick was back in in pastoral days in the church, and I, I watched this happen many times. Someone in the congregation will get upset about some matter, whatever it might be, and they will uh, begin to campaign, especially if it concerns the pastor. Yeah. And they will campaign and they'll go to one and they'll start nodding their head. Don't you, agree, you know, don't you know that this is what's going on? And did you know? And yeah. the whole time they're shaking their head, yes. And if the other person doesn't say, I absolutely disagree with you, they may just hear them and walk away. Or they may join in and say, you know what? You may have a point there or you're right. But they start keeping score. Mm hmm. And finally, they'll come to the pastor. There's a lot of people upset about whatever. Yeah. And on their scorecard, they got, you know, whatever number they can come up with, whatever percentage. I had to learn that when they gave me a number, or if they would even go that far, most most times they would only say there's a lot of people upset. Uh they only can paint back to you then this supposed army of uh, disgruntled people. You can't believe everything that is reported. There's a famous passage in the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah uh, where uh, Sambalat and Tobias come and they're reporting back to Nehemiah and they're saying, and we know it's true because Gashu says it. <laughs> you know they you know and gash he, he says well who is this character we've not heard him before where did he come from my we it's very very easy to hear someone make a point read their point on social media on youtube in an email that someone sends you a link to some something and get your fire burning. And next thing you know, you've gone out and you found three or four collaborating things and only to find that somewhere down the road, all of those sources are those that mislead. Maybe somebody just picked up and the re- one reports it and then another reports it and then another reports it, but they're all just reporting the same thing that they read from one another. Yeah, and so you, now you have two or three witnesses, but they all came from the same source. So it's all over the internet. You just go out there and you'll find it. It's all over the place. So, so you know, there's a lot of things about earth shapes and 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 all kinds of uh, scientific discoveries that did not pan out to be true, and they're everywhere. Mm-hmm. This is your boundary. 
if we would read this, well, I read that. No, read this. I don't want to read that. I want to read something more exciting. Read this. <laughs> read this first. And get into the idea and the mentality that's in this book. And start listening to the Ruach of Kodesh, the Holy Spirit that's in this book. Then go do your research. And if a site proves itself less than credible one time, you probably want to set that one to the side. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a, there's a major news reporting agency in Israel that uh, I get stuff from people send it to me all the time. And uh, I can tell you that most of the things that they're reporting is total nonsense. Uh, do they have some truth occasionally? Yes, they do. But uh, a few years ago, their number one story that they reported on, uh, a, a number of, this is quite a few years ago, their number one story for that year was the freshwater pools at the edge of the Dead Sea, which was prophecy being fulfilled about the Dead Sea will turn to fresh water and will be thriving with fish. Well, uh, it's easy to find freshwater pools around the Dead Sea after a rain. <laughs> um, one, a, a number of years prior to this, uh, even before this, uh, this reporting agency, that I call them the Israel Inquirer, uh, there was... The, the, it was reported that the vultures in the Golan, uh, specifically in the area of Gamla, uh -huh. were breeding at such a high rate that it was literally blocking out the sun and clouding that whole area. Uh, I've been to Gamla countless, I don't know how many times. And if we see six or eight vultures, that's a good day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and I've never seen one really block out the sun. So th these, these things travel because people are wanting to validate what they believe they already know. Uh, I receive emails and, you know, and, and various other media from other, from people. Uh, people decide that you know there, there's a number of folks out there, and I, I appreciate it the the uh, the desire to share information. Okay, I got it. But uh, you know, I, I literally had one person that was sending me like 14 emails a day at least, and it was what I was reading on on you know the headlines on news. It's like, do you think I'm an idiot? Please don't answer that question <laughs> because they, that I can, you know, I can look at a headline on, you know, Fox news or something. All right. But there's a number of people that have sent me so much. Let me use a good kosher word baloney that I don't even bother to open the link because they've sent me 10, 15, 20 links that have been totally irrelevant junk. I, I don't know how to say it any, any more blunt. I, I tried, but I couldn't. Uh, we need to make sure that what we're passing on to people is things that are worth their time. We all have limited time. And so, you know, someone sends a link that's, you know, you, you send me an hour long video. I'm probably not going to watch it because I don't have that kind of time to waste on something. If it's of that importance, then how about you get doing a report on it, putting it into a paragraph, and then say, you know, if you'd like more information, here's the link. Wow, now that would be good, but I don't see that happening much. So let's use an analogy here. Ah. Uh, Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, I think we can we establish that internet theology may not be correct. Internet theological debates may have a lot of holes in them on all sides. 
Uh, and you definitely don't want to go to internet universities and seminary for your doctorate in theology. It's just not a, a wise thing to do. Yeah. Um, my my brother Greg was uh, stationed in uh, California. Uh, I forget what the fort is out there next to Barstow. Uh, maybe you can remember it's a tank training venue of some sort. Anyway, yeah. he was stationed out there, and it, on his drive home in the evenings, he said it was just a, a long, straight stretch of road out in the oh, desert. Yeah. yeah. And no scenery of any significance to look at. Nothing really changes. And he said there were very frequently there were wrecks where people just simply, even though they were driving down a straight road with no curves in it, they would run off the road because they fell asleep. Mm -hmm. um, so you made sure that you were awake. You listened to loud radio, whatever you had to do, you made sure you stayed awake on that road. Even on a straight path, if there are not guardrails, if there are not occasional road bumps or something to keep you focused and alert spiritually and theologically, it's easy to fall off the road and find yourself mm -hmm. in a disaster. So in the American highway system, we have guardrails, we have lines on the road to show us when safe to pass and not to pass when the divide of the highway is coming road signs, speed limits, rumble strips, uh, you know, signs for directions. If you want to go here, this is your exit, etc. All of those, the American highway system is very sophisticated when you start thinking about it. And we, you have to know the rules of the road before you can pass on enough to get a license to get on it. Theoretically. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> theoretically. theoretically. <laughs> Just because you um, passed a test with a D plus doesn't mean you're fit for the road. Yeah. So when we come to, to the process of study, the, the, the trademark uh, of the Hebrew Roots community is everybody's their own theologian. We're not trusting someone behind a desk somewhere or behind a pulpit somewhere to firmly lay out this is what's true, this is what's not true. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me that. I will find out for myself. And what do we do? We go home and we have a Bible somewhere close by, but we start searching the internet and we start looking for information. And often as times, as we have said, you start looking for that which collaborates your viewpoint of mm -hmm. what you think is true. And you will find plenty of people that will agree with you. Oh, yeah. So if you can find what you're looking for, if you look hard enough. Mike, what are the guardrails? What are well, the speed limit signs that we should encourage people to use rather than just typing in a subject and freelancing research mm -hmm. on the Internet? I think one thing is beware of don't drive under the influence of conspiracies. <laughs> uh you know, that's that's one of the things that you shouldn't do, okay? Yeah. Uh, if, if you do that, you're going to be all over the place anyway. Um, so set your focus. Uh, I talked with uh, with the guys. We, we couldn't record this week because uh, of some other things. But last week the uh, on Life on Purpose, we recorded about, uh, you know, finding your focus, uh, your, your destination should be your focus. So first of all, the destination has to be my focus. Uh, then from that point on, we need to set the boundaries of, of you know, which lane are we going to drive in? What are we going to do? Um, and then look for, then seek good counsel. I think one of the, 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 the lost things of life today is seeking counsel. Let, let me rephrase it. 
into is seeking how to receive counsel. Let me give you uh, the the uh, the typical. I'm at a conference, congregation, something like that. Someone walks up to me and says, uh, "Yeah, I would like to share with you and get your opinion on this," and then basically goes into a diatribe of what they already believe. Uh, at that point in time, I know that I can either just kind of nod my head and say, wow, that's that's really something, and walk away, or I can stand there and try to argue with someone that has already made up their mind. Uh, I, again, don't have time in my life to argue with people that already know everything. So, how do we... Sometimes I'll have somebody who walks up and says, "You know, could I could I get your opinion on a subject?" Okay, well, that's a good way to start. But about halfway through, or less, usually less, uh, through me giving the opinion, I start to see the contortions upon their face. You start to see the steam coming out their ears. You start to see their their face contorting into something that looks like it's from another planet. <laughs> and at that point in time, you know that you are now disagreeing with them, and you're done. Not only are you done, but they're going to go to everybody else in the conference and tell them, that person over there is an idiot. Don't listen to them. Because the the... In a day of con- of communication, most people don't know how. Most people don't. Social media is is a is an absolute test in in a day of communication. Most people don't because it's not about a discussion. You know, we the the reason we started foundations for life which at first was torah teacher roundtable on hebrew nation radio years ago years ago yeah ancient uh you know we we were having to you know go out in the yard and and turn the crank for the <laughs> you know for the batteries to be charged to, yeah, yeah no not not quite that long ago but close, close. <laughs> is because when you and i first met barry I would go up to uh, to Gloucester. You'd come to wherever I was. I've been all over. You, you, you're still in the same spot. Um, it's something for stability. We'd sit. Down. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, somebody's got to be stable in my life. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that should scare me. Uh, <laughs> Daniel always said, you know, our, my my son Daniel. He's, he said, looked at me one day. He says, "But I am your emotional stability." <laughs> Yeah. Um, we would sit down in your living room and begin discussing. Uh, I don't remember us ever having a real argument. Nah. We we had times that it was like, yeah, I, I'm not seeing it that way. I'm seeing it this way. Okay, well, let's let's back up, regroup, run at this thing again. And eventually we we look at each other and go. Wow, I'd never thought of it like that. And it was that communication that we developed that when the opportunity f- came up for us to do uh, Torah Teacher Roundtable originally together, we jumped on it, wondering if the same thing could happen. And that's what we've done all these years, is is basically been a discussion between the two of us. Right. So we have to understand, first of all, how to drive down the road. You got to understand the difference between the the gas pedal and the brake and the clutch. You have to understand the basics of there are boundaries that keep you on the road, but there's also boundaries that direct the path of your road. And that is, to quote David, King David, your word is a 
lamp into my feet, a light into my path, or opposite one of those. I never can't get that one right. Maybe I did one time. <laughs> uh, that that anything that we do, the boundaries should be within the words of the Torah, the words of the Scripture. And if we can't find the Scripture in what we're trying to walk in, in context, maybe we need to yeah, maybe we need to stop and. And say, wait, am I truly on the right path here? Did, did I take an exit I wasn't supposed to? Did, did I was I driving under the influence of conspiracies and oh, squirrel, and, and off you go into a ditch somewhere, or a wrong turn to a, a gas station or something, and you're like, I don't know if I'll live getting out of here. Uh, you know. We've got to be careful about our walk, and the, the, the Scripture is, it will define our walk. There is a, 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 a good tool to use when you, you're talking about bouncing things off of someone, checking something out. A couple of thoughts here. If you're going to talk to someone about a line of reasoning and inquiry you have about the scriptures, a doctrinal thought, uh, an insight. Try talking to someone that has joy in their life. I'm not talking about someone that's so oblivious about everything that they don't have enough understanding to, to pay attention to anything. I mean, the, yeah. someone that is grounded and they're grounded with joy. Yeah. Yeah, if you're I talking to someone that is always angry and upset about something and is always espousing the idea, we were lied to, we were lied to, we were lied to, you're not going to get a whole lot out of that. Those are angry people that are looking for something else to be angry about. So, you know, when, when I encounter someone, they, they're upset about everything all the time. I take it with a grain of salt. Uh, you know, I just, I, I don't give a lot of credibility there. Someone that has uh, some foundation and some joy about them and enjoys their their Messiah and embraces him and loves him, uh, I, I, I want to run that by them. I'm not looking for somebody that's been to heaven five times yeah. and uh, has angelic visitations every other day. Uh, I don't have a lot of credibility there either. I'm just, but you know, I'm just throwing that out there for for a thought. But there's you know, one. If you're, go ahead. If you're following a truck that's hauling cow manure, don't be surprised when your car stinks. Yeah. True. Yeah. 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 The other that's, thought I would have is, and this this may cause some uh, some younger eyes to roll, but hear me out. Gain the counsel of elders. And you would think, well, you are the guys that have ruined it for the rest of us. No, no, no. There are some. There are some in our peer group, Mike, that have run amok, that have run roughshod, that have been um, so adamant at times that they've almost become abusive. I understand there are certain certain times that things have not been well done, and my apologies for that. But Mike, there's a lot of men and women. They have fought systems and demons and angry people, and they have defended Messiah, and they stood the test. They're still standing there. They're scarred. But instead of becoming hard, they chose to become wise. There is a difference. There's yeah. two paths. Life can make you hard and resentful and bitter, or you can learn from the experiences of life and walk in wisdom. And then that, out of that wise cancel, you can help someone else that is following you on that same path getting ready to fight the same battles 
when you're going into this battle, I can't save you from the battle, but here's what, where the winning is. This is where your victory's at. Don't follow the temptation to get over here and, and the weeds on this or that. Stay true to this course. Here's your victory. When you approach someone who is an elder, you may not agree with everything they say, but it's definitely something, you. Sh even if you disagree, take it to the Father in prayer and ask about what was said. There's a, there's a dear and uh, trusted older gentleman who has been a pastor for many, many, many decades. He's now up in his mid-80s. His health is failing. He has, I'm sure, enough pastoral experiences in the church that he has served to have reason to be angry and resentful about a lot of different things. But I can't tell you a more gentle, about a more gentle, loving, um, a nurturing man. He and his mm -hmm. wife are precious gems in the eyes of Yah. I don't agree with everything he says, and our doctrines go different ways. He still believes, you know, but he is willing to sit down and discuss the scriptures. And he does so pleasantly and with love. And he's willing to listen and, and share. I love talking to that man. Even though we are walking in two different ranks, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that man, I would trust his prayer life. A someone who is a, a Shabbat keeper that is mad and stomping about something other, I don't know that I want them praying for me. Yeah. Well, you know, it. Uh, you talk about the hurts, and I see this in in generations of of so of leaders, so called leaders today, uh, blaming other people. You know, don't blame me for what somebody else did to you. Okay, if if we're if we're you know all driving down the road and and uh, someone else runs into you, don't blame me for them running into you. It wasn't my fault. And so this whole thing of well. You know, one person r drove into, you know, uh, crashed their car into mine. So every driver out there is responsible is just stupid. <laughs> and th that whole thing comes over into messianic circles. Um, have there been have there been things that have been done wrong? Yes. But don't blame me for what I didn't do. I, I get really, as you can tell, I get kind of tired of that one. Uh, but here's this is what I'll finish with, and uh, it happened up at uh, Esh Kodesh. I was up at the home of Nati Ram. Uh, Esh Kodesh is one of the uh, starting communities up in the uh, Judea Samaria area, and uh, he Nati started the organization called Lev HaOlam. Has now sold it, and and that's another story, but. Um, we were up there with a tour group, and he said, quoting the scripture, one of the prophets, uh, ten men shall, of, of the nations shall gather, uh, shall grab the zit zit of a Jew and say, take us to, take us with you, for we know that Yudhei is with you, loosely quoted there. And Nadi said, in grabbing the zit zit of a Jew, make sure that you're grabbing the right Jew. You know, that verse, Barry, was written prior to Yeshua walking upon this earth. Yeshua was wearing zitzit. So were the Pharisees who sought to kill him. Not all the Pharisees were, I'm not putting everybody into this, but the Pharisaical leaders that sought to kill him, many people grabbed onto their zitzit instead of the zitzit of Yeshua. Yeah. Make sure that the elders that you are that, that you have in your life, they're the right elders to have in your life. The people that you have in your life, are they the right people? And the truth that you're seeking in your life, are you truly seeking his truth or just some other variation of what you believe? I'll leave you, leave us with this. Don't study mad, study glad. <laughs> All right. It helps. There you go. All right. <laughs>
Thanks for All watching right. today. Thanks for uh, sharing in your social media. Thank you for subscribing uh, to our channels, to join to Hashem.org on, or, or is it just join to Hashem, I guess, on YouTube and Remnant of Israel on YouTube? Oh, yeah. Everything's available from join to Hashem.org. You can click all the links and go to YouTube, Vimeo, Rumble. Uh, I don't have dogsled.com because it doesn't actually do anything for you. So. So uh, thanks for subscribing, hitting the like button, and uh, we'll see you again next week, hopefully with something invigorating, life-giving, something to make you happy. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Don't study mad. There you go. Okay. We'll yeah. talk to you again next week, folks. Thanks. See ya.